Welcome to the second and final part of our series on Hokkaido. We continue our journey through the heartland of Japan's northernmost island, away from the big cities and deep in the embrace of nature. In this episode, we'll head towards remote Higashikawa to camp in the middle of a forest and up the slopes of Mount Asahidake, Hokkaido's highest peak. We'll find some time to savor the island's famous fresh cuisine and prize-winning sake before hitting the shops for some special Hokkaido treats to take home. So come along with us as we show you how to enjoy more of Hokkaido in summer. I'm David Saldran and this is Executive Class. We're leaving our lakeside luxury lodge in Tomakumai and heading deep into the heartland of Hokkaido where mountains and forests dominate the land. Welcome to Higashikawa, and I'm spending the night in this forest. And this log cabin over here, I have it all to myself. Higashikawa is literally off the beaten track, and that's the attraction of this quiet town. During winter, these cabins are ski lodges, but during the summer, these transform into mountain cottages. It's a perfect base for hiking through the forest. Hokkaido was integrated into Japan only in the late 19th century, so you'll find few traditional structures on the island. Instead, Western-style cottages are popular, partly because American civil engineers helped build Hokkaido. Yet, some mainland Japanese customs have taken root here. This is how you sleep the traditional way. It takes some getting used to, but you will. In summer, the days are spent outdoors and picnics are a favorite pastime. I've been invited to a barbecue, so I'm visiting a grocery to see what we can have for the party tonight. Higashikawa is known for its produce, so if you're here, you must visit one of the local farms to see how these products are grown. But if you don't have time, a local grocery is the next best thing. We're having a barbecue tonight, and I'm picking out some of the best produce from the land. Open-air markets are the way to go. But even a simple supermarket like Bokuren won't disappoint a traveling gourmand. Because farms are at the border of cities, and with a coast close by, the produce is always fresh. Start with the seafood. The king crab legs are legendary here, and so is the squid. Ah, when in Hokkaido, you must have Hokkaido scallop. Beef is another specialty. The grass and climate of the island are ideal for raising cattle and lamb, a meat used in a local dish called Genjis Khan. It's hard to believe grocery shopping can be this fun. Vegetables are so incredibly tasty in Hokkaido, they're eaten grilled with little or no seasoning. Aha! This is what I've been looking for melons, and in the summer, they're at their sweetest. Melons and watermelons from Hokkaido are known as the best in all of Japan. A quality like this doesn't come cheap. All this fresh food is getting me excited for the barbecue tonight and making me hungry for lunch. Yeah, 
If you have no place to cook, then visit a restaurant. Most establishments here insist on ingredients from nearby forests and farms. Ah, thank you so much. Mmm, looks good. So, this is what you come here for. It's their shabu shabu. It looks more like a salad than the soup that you're familiar with. And instead of beef, they serve it with pork. Two types of local pork. Let's try it. They only serve it at the cafe of the Asahikawa Country Club in a town beside Higashikawa. The shabu shabu comes with no soup and it's served with pork from Furano and Asahikawa. Both are prized by chefs in Japan. And of course, no meal is complete without Higashikawa rice. The local rice is also considered the best and thus the most desired in the country. The rice fields of Higashikawa are irrigated by pure natural spring water flowing from Mount Asahidake. It's like growing rice using Evian. It produces a taste that's purer, cleaner, and healthier. No kidding, I've been to Hokkaido twice already and I've never had a mediocre meal. The cafe's venison and pork sausages are superb even when just grilled. And the summer delicacy of chilled sesame udon soup puts the more expensive Tokyo udon establishments to shame. Remember the melon I showed you in the grocery? Well, this is what it looks like when it's cut up. Is it sweet? You bet it is. Mmm, so juicy and sweet. No wonder it cost you an arm and a leg. The cafe is one of many owned by Koji Wakasa. You might remember him from our previous trip to Hokkaido. Wakasa-san also owns the Usuzan ropeway that leads to the scenic slopes of Mount Usuzan overlooking the southwest coast of Hokkaido. He was also first to introduce me to barbecue, Hokkaido style. Wakasa-san, thank you so much for that very nice, uh, very nice lunch. Ah, okay. So, Wakasa-san is also inviting us to visit the Asahidake Ropeway, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. Thank you very much. Asahidake is an active volcano. Regardless, summer is high season for trekkers and climbers. So here we are at the base of Hokkaido's tallest peak, Asahidake. And they prepared a welcome for us. Yes, Filipinos are welcome here. You can either hike up the slopes or take the more convenient way, by ropeway. The different languages here represent the different tourists that come to Asahidake. The newest one on the steps? Tagalog. Obviously, Filipinos are coming here more often. In a span of 10 minutes, the ropeway climbs to 1,600 meters above sea level. That's high. But it's only halfway to the peak of Asahidake. In summer, the slopes are covered with alpine flowers. But since it was raining when we got there, we can only show you images of what we missed. It's the height of summer, but it can feel like the depths of winter. And if you want to know what that feels like, you could trek up the summit or visit a year-round attraction that simulates it. No matter how beautiful Hokkaido is in the summer, the most popular season is still winter. That's when most people want to come here. But it's also the most expensive time to visit. So if you want a taste of Hokkaido winter, this is where you want to be. It's called the Ice Pavilion, a theme park in nearby Kamikawa that recreates the harsh Hokkaido winter months even during summer. Okay, it's a bit touristy in here, 
but okay, kids will love goes. it. But okay. I've never been to Hokkaido in winter, so this is my chance to see what locals have to endure for four months every year. Time to get frozen. It's like walking into a freezer. The temperature drops to negative 20 degrees, about the same as winter in most parts of the island. So after around five minutes, you start to really feel the cold. Good thing is my lips aren't frozen yet, so I can still talk. Stay a little longer, and even your saliva starts to dry up. This was once a wet towel. Now, it's stiff as a sword. Inside this room, the temperature drops even more to negative 41 degrees. That's even colder than the coldest day in Hokkaido's history, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's like a blizzard. Apparently, a lot of tourists are masochists. Some only in their underwear. Naked, even. So far, I've only been here about 10, 15 minutes. But after 24 hours, this is what you might feel like. This frozen banana, it's been here for a day. And look how hard it is. <laughs> it's a banana. The cold in the ice pavilion gives you an idea why, despite the island's beauty and fertile land, Hokkaido is still the least populated part of Japan. With cold weather most of the year, locals grab every chance to enjoy mild weather outdoors. No wonder barbecues are so popular. Our hosts from the Higashikawa Promotional Board have prepared a picnic featuring all the food I've come to love from around the area. You can never get enough of Hokkaido king crab and the way the sweet meat from the legs falls off the shell. And the scallops. The Hokkaido variety grows large, but tender in the cold waters of the coast. In other parts of Japan, or the world, it would be unthinkable to serve rare and expensive ingredients like these other than in a fine dining setting. But even the wagyu beef, the free-range chicken, and the organic vegetables coveted by chefs all over Japan, seem like just another meal on the grill. Credit their taste to the water, the natural springs that irrigate the farms and nourish the livestock. Here, the men learned to perfect the art of grilling at a young age. They've even invented a dish peculiar to Hokkaido called Genghis Khan. I know a Mongolian barbecue, but not Genghis Khan. Ah, Genghis Khan is one big popular thing in Hokkaido. Oh. You have to try it. What, what is it exactly? It's a lamb. Barbecue with uh, vegetables. Onions and scallions and... And it's just cooked like a barbecue style. Right. Apart from food, Higashikawa has one other claim to fame. That of having the most hospitable people on the island. Bye -bye. <laughs> Indeed, there must be something in their water after all. When we return after the break, we'll head back to the coast, to one of the oldest sake breweries, and spare some time for heavy-duty free shopping on the island. These and more, plus tips on how you can plan a vacation of your own to Hokkaido when executive class returns. Welcome back to the last part of our series on Hokkaido, the northernmost and least urbanized part of Japan. In no other region of the country do the colors and flavors of the seasons change so dramatically. Because of this, Hokkaido is a popular destination year-round, spring and summer for hiking and catching a glimpse of the blooming flowers, fall for watching the leaves turn and the landscape ablaze in autumn colors. Winter is for enjoying the powdery snow and world-famous ski slopes. A 
If you're planning a trip soon, we suggest booking a tour in an airline that provides the most convenient and comfortable way to enjoy your holiday. For getting there, we recommend ANA, Japan's All Nippon Airways, rated 5 stars by Skytrax, the highest for an airline. ANA operates daily flights to Tokyo. Both feature award winning Japanese service and attention to detail, and premium in flight amenities. There are two international gateways in Japan to get to Hokkaido from Narita in the outskirts of Tokyo or Haneda, which is where we are. Our personal recommendation for one, it's more modern, second, it's closer to downtown Tokyo, and third, it's a hub of ANA. So, if you're flying with the airline, this is the most convenient way to connect. Haneda is perfect if you plan a side trip to Tokyo. Buses and trains from the airport take you directly to your favorite neighborhoods and popular sites downtown in less than an hour. Connecting to Hokkaido is so convenient, with more than a dozen flights to choose from. And with its experienced Japan Fair promo, ANA offers discounted rates for foreigners. Innovations like electronic check-in make it even easier. So here's a cool thing. Most airports these days have electronic check-in. The problem is, if you have luggage, you still need to check in at the counter. Not with ANA at Haneda Airport. In this case, even the luggage check-in is fully automated. ANA was first to introduce automated baggage check-in in Japan, and it's extremely popular with domestic passengers. For now, it only works with tickets purchased locally, but will eventually process tickets bought overseas. It cuts precious minutes wasted in line, giving you more time to browse the airport shops or enjoy the lounge. Mileage club members and business class passengers have access to the ANA lounge with its generous space and selection of amenities. This is what I always look forward to in an ANA lounge. It's their sake selection. Not the cheap grocery variety, by the way, but only premium artisanal sakes from different prefectures of the country. And it changes every month. This is just basic for ANA standards. Up a notch in luxury and up a floor is the ANA Suite Lounge, exclusive for Diamond members, their top-tier customers. It's not the only airline that connects to Hokkaido, but with comfort like this, ANA is our preferred way to go. Booking a customized tour with an agency specializing in Hokkaido is also a good idea. Private vans cut travel time, and pre-booked itineraries eliminate costly mistakes. It's our last day in Hokkaido and we reserved it for shopping. Too bad you can't take the rich landscape home with you, but you can take home a special rice brew made from it. We're now in the town of Kuriyama, best known in Hokkaido for its sake industry. And this brewery is one of the oldest there is. Let's try some sake. The Kobayashi Suzo Sake Brewery is one of only two in Hokkaido. The brewery's guide, Emi Ono, tells me the Kobayashi family has been brewing sake for 136 years now. Although Hokkaido isn't exactly known for sake, the pure, natural water that flows through the island is ideal for brewing it. This part of the brewery dates back to 1921. And over here, you'll see replicas of the original implements or tools for making sake. All sake back then was made by hand. But I was just told that sake today is still made that way. Very little has changed through the years. Rice polished by hand is used to make sake. The more polished, the higher the quality. So, Behind these doors is the warehouse containing aged sake. Sake that's been aged for three to four years before they're bottled. It's the premium sake of this brewery. Ah. 
Unlike with wine or whiskey, sake isn't usually aged. But the Kobayashi family is onto something. The rare sake is prized in Hokkaido. It's so fine, it tastes like whiskey. Most of the buildings date back to the 1920s. The local pine wood keeps the interiors cool in summer and not too cold in winter. This is the oldest part of the building. It goes back to 1899. And up this stairway, you'll find the original barrel of sake offered to the gods. Right now, you can't climb up because this building could collapse any time now. Sake is made by fermenting rice mash, a mix of water, steamed rice, rice malt, and yeast. It's a sensitive process sake master Minami Shuji prefers to keep secret. Hokkaido rice grain, he says, is bigger and springier than mainland varieties, so it's better for making the malt. The mash ferments in these large vats before it's stored and bottled as sake. They produce 20 brands of sake here, from the most basic to the most premium, daiginjo. They even offer free tasting. Okay, this is the aged whiskey. It's very different. It's very different, the taste. And the daiginjo. This is the premium stuff. Handmade in small batches. Again, the taste improves, there's more flavor. It's very nice. Sake is a great souvenir to take back home. But if you're not much of a drinker, perhaps branded apparel is more for you. The huge Reira outlet mall near Chitose Airport is perfect for last-minute shopping. Hokkaido's largest outlet mall is open daily from 10 in the morning to 8 in the evening. Stuff here is about 30 to 50% less than prices downtown, and 55 of the 140 stores offer tax-free shopping. Okay, here's one thing you need to know. Not all the brands here are made in Japan, nor are they Japanese brands. But here's one thing for sure. All the merchandise is imported for the Japanese market, which means you might find items that you won't find elsewhere, outside Japan. Travelers rushing to the airport have other options as well. If you're one of those visitors who can't find a time to squeeze in some shopping time in your itinerary, don't panic. The new Chitose Airport is chock full of souvenirs. Our favorite store and the best curated here Anna Festa. The airport shop specializes in delicacies from every corner of Hokkaido. Here's one other item I really truly recommend. It's Shiroi Koibito. It's a Hokkaido original. It's white chocolate cookies. Last time I took this home to Manila, it was so popular. It's really worth it. The Lang Dushat is made in Sapporo. Factory visits are available, and you can even make your own Shiroi Koibito. <laughs> if you're in doubt about what to buy, just look for the gift items everyone is lining up for, or gift items that are last on the shelf, like this one. I have no idea what it is, but it's the only one here, it must be good. Let me ask her. So, what is this? Potato, potato stick. Ah, very popular, right? Because uh, no more. Sold out. <laughs> it's called Potato Farm, the current rage among Japanese tourists. It's so popular, the factory can't keep up with demand. If you bought Hokkaido dairy products in a grocery during your stay, it'll probably melt or spoil by the time you get to the airport, which is why it's always best to buy it here just before you fly home. Butter, you must buy it. And of course, who doesn't know Roy's? But what most people don't know is it's made in Hokkaido. And even fewer people know that some of these chocolates are made in the Roy's factory in New Chitose Airport itself. So if you wanna take home something fresh, 
buy it here. Like Filipinos, taking home gifts for family and friends is a well-loved Japanese custom. And that's why the packaging is always beautiful, and the train stations and airports are always well-stocked. After all, nothing quite represents the farmers and the artisans of Hokkaido better than products made from the land and crafted in their workshops. It's a piece of the island you can share with those back home. A taste of Hokkaido that will keep making you want to return. And that's all for this episode of Executive Class. I'm David Saldran. Thanks for watching.